Hey guys, one of the things that we have committed to doing on our homestead, I guess I have committed to doing on our homestead, is simplify our pantry. And so I would rather spend my time and money and energy on a few really good quality ingredients than having like a whole bunch of variety. Uh, and one of the things that I have found is if I am really excited about one or two really basic ingredients, I am so into cooking. I mean, as much as I can from scratch to use that stuff up. And one thing that I have found that has been just a really fun challenge for me um, has been bone broth. I love the taste of it. It has so many health benefits. The collagen that you get from it is really good for your body. Um, and so I have been trying to incorporate that as much as possible. Uh, so I thought that I would show you guys today how I make our chicken bone broth. one of two ways. So I will usually try to roast a chicken at least once a week. Um, super basic seasoning, salt, pepper, maybe some garlic powder, um, butter on the top. If you guys are interested in how I roast a chicken, this has been um, uh, a problem that I've been trying to overcome for a long time actually. I, um, I am just recently getting good at roasting a chicken. This is more of an art form, I think, than I realized beforehand. Uh, but I try to roast a chicken once a week for our family, and if I get around to doing that, then I will save the bones from that in the refrigerator if I'm going to have time the next day to make broth. But most of the time, I stick them in a Ziploc bag along with any skin or fat or extra meat, especially if it's dark meat, um, in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the freezer. And then whenever I get a chance to make broth, then I will pull it out of the freezer and do the whole process. Uh, or you can get a chicken from any grocery store that is already cooked. So a rotisserie chicken, you can get them from Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, I think Target has them, I think Whole Foods has them. It's a pretty common ingredient. Pull the chicken off of that, use that in any chicken dish that you want. So then once you have the bones, you want to uh, put them in a pan. Now, it's important to note that yes, they have been cooked once, but whenever you are cooking a chicken, roasting it, or it's in the rotisserie, and it's being cooked that way, the bones are steaming, so they're not roasting, and so the flavor is going to be in whatever that heat hit on the outside, right? Um, and then the flavor kind of lessens as you go in, in further to the chicken. Uh, so even the outside of the chicken might taste really like salty and yummy and delicious, those bones have just steamed. So if you've ever had steamed chicken, I don't recommend it, it's not delicious, um, rather than roasting it, you want to give those bones as much flavor as you can. So you're going to start out pouring them out of your Ziploc bag or container into a pan that can be both in the oven and on the stove top. And here's why. Once you've gotten your bones nice and roasted, you see all this, these brown bits, even the bones are starting to brown. This is flavor, this is yummy, and this is going to make your stock delicious, which in turn is going to make anything that you cook in your stock also delicious. So the first thing that we wanna do is take all of the bones and the chicken and the skin, all of the solid stuff out and set those aside. Now, we're definitely gonna use this but what's in this pan is also worth using. So we're going to get all these little pieces out. All right, once you get most of that solid stuff out, we're going to turn our stove on. We're going to turn it on pretty high. And this is why it's really important that we have a dish that can go in the oven and on the stove top. Because all of this that is left in is really good. All of this that's left in is really good stuff. And we're going to use that. So we want to get the pan really hot. It's already pretty hot because it was in the stove, obviously, in the oven. Um, but now we want to make sure and get, when we see it, to st start to bubble a little bit. And it's important to note, too, I did not add any oil to this when I put it in the oven. 
all of the fat that's in here, all of the oil that is in here, all came out of that chicken. And we want to keep that. We want to keep that in our stock because that gives us flavor. So we're going to just pour about a cup or so of water, just plain water, into it. And because it's hot, it's going to start to deglaze that pan on the bottom. You can see how that stuff is coming up? And then the next thing that we're going to add is tomato paste. This is actually not that common of an ingredient, I don't think, in um, chicken stock, but it just adds like a dimension of flavor, especially with the roasted chicken stock. So I'm adding about a tablespoon, nothing too crazy. And then I'm going to scrape up all the little bits and mix that tomato paste in with that. All right guys, since we have our bones roasted and our pan deglazed, then we are going to literally throw the recipe into a pot. Um, so the beautiful thing about stock is you can kind of just do whatever you want, whatever is going to be yummy to you, whatever your family will eat. Um, this is just the recipe that I use and it works every time. So that's why I'm sticking. <laughs> uh, so I'm using my Instant Pot. This is my Instant Pot um, pot. The, thing that goes inside of the Instant Pot. Uh, this is going to end up making about three quarts for us. Um, this is the easiest way for me to do it. Uh, because I want bone broth and I want that collagen to come out, I would either have to cook it for like 24 hours in the crock pot or on top of the stove, which is not that big of a deal. I've done it before. Um, this is just a lot faster. And so, especially if I am making chicken stock because I want to use it that night, this is really the only way that we can do it. <laughs> so I'm going to do it in my Instant Pot. So the first thing that I'm going to put in is my roast chicken. And this is hot. It just came out of the oven, so you want to be kind of careful with it. And any little drippings that came off of the pan, that's good stuff. You want to keep that. Next, I'm going to add in some carrots. I usually keep, because I keep the chicken in the, like the chicken carcass in the freezer too, um, a lot of times I will just keep the vegetables that I'm going to use in the freezer as well. These came out of the refrigerator because we were munching on carrots yesterday, but you can keep just bags of your vegetables that you want in your chicken stock in your freezer also, and that just makes it a lot easier even um, when it comes time to make it. The next time I'm going to add is celery. Now, I actually don't love the taste of celery, so I don't add as much to my stock as other people probably do. Uh, I try to just, you know, steer clear of it as much as possible. But I do notice it when it's missing. And so I'll just throw a few, like, half stalks in. This was a half of an onion that I had left over from when I cooked something weeks or months ago that was in my freezer. So it's just wedged up. I always have diced onions in my freezer because it's just a lot easier. Uh, and I've used those too. It works just as well. Salt and pepper. Um, now if you want a low sodium chicken stock, you can skip the salt part. I don't. I don't love low sodium chicken stock. If I'm going to add flavor with it, I'm going to add flavor. The way I see it is it's just something I don't have to add later. So the next thing is garlic. A lot of people don't add garlic to their chicken stock. I always do. Uh, my family loves garlic and so I always will just add a big spoonful. It's really easy. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to add is that liquid from our pan. It has that tomato paste in it. Get that out. And then apple cider vinegar. Um, I use a good organic apple cider vinegar. I'm, I don't know if you can use anything else. It's just what I like. Because we're doing bone broth and we want that collagen to get sucked out of those bones, we have to break the bones down. And if we just let this go for a long time, eventually it would. But I have found that adding a little bit of acid from the apple cider vinegar really aids in breaking those bones down. And you'll see whenever we pull the bones out at the end that they just like crumble. Uh, and that's good. That's what we want. Anything that is solid that's left in here in the end, we're not going to use anyway. Um, so we want it all to break down and get mushy 
because we want all of the flavor that is in the stuff I just put in this pot to go into the stock for us to use for recipes later. Uh, the last thing that we'll put in here is water, and I'm just going to fill it to the max fill line, um, and then put it in the Instant Pot and cook it on high pressure for four hours, and then I'll show you what we have. All right, we had it in the Instant Pot on high pressure for four hours, and I just took it out. You can either do a manual release or let it vent on its own. Um, it really doesn't matter. At this point, we've cooked it for four hours, so a few more minutes isn't going to really make a difference. I just let it go on its own until the pressure was released um, on its own without me doing anything today, just because I had other stuff going on. But I have started um, ladling it into my jar where I will let it sit, kind of come down to room temperature before I do anything else with it. Uh, but basically, I... It's not rocket science. We just have a stock pot full of hot broth, bone broth, and it has all of those solids that we put in it. Um, obviously, everything's not going to completely disintegrate in it, and so we want to strain all of that out because we obviously don't want big chunks of like onion and carrot and stuff in whatever we're going to use when we make this. So that's bone broth. It's really easy. It's really delicious, and it's practically free when you use just the scraps of stuff that you were going to throw away. Anyway, just hope you guys like it.